We're going to talk now about how to deal with merging when you have multiple people working on the same Unity project and potentially making changes to the same scene, and then those changes wind up conflicting and needing to be merged back together. There's lots of information out there about how to do merging when you have standard programming languages, um, such as Jesse Liberty's LinkedIn Learning Tutorial that I've referred you to in the past. But things are different when you're dealing with the graphical scenes we get in Unity, and so we need a special tool for merging those graphical scenes. What we're going to talk about in this video is how to install a tool called Unity YAML Merge, which is used for merging Unity scenes. The video has two parts. We're going to end up with a demo that shows how Unity YAML Merge can be called from source tree. But first, we're going to go through the somewhat hairy instructions that are required to get this all set up in the first place. The first thing we need to do is install a tool that allows us to do visual merging. And we're going to use a tool called kdiff3. The reason we're going with this one is because it's the one that Jesse Liberty uses in his tutorial, so we may as well be consistent. One of the advantages of kdiff3 is that it runs on both Windows and Mac, and so it makes it easier for consistency across the course. So the installation is straightforward. We go to that website, we hit download, and we go through the normal Windows download stuff. There's not much more to it than that. So once that merging tool is installed, we need to configure source tree to be able to use um, that tool. And to do this, we need to first figure out where Unity YAML Merge is actually located on your computer. To do this, we go into Unity Hub, and then we click on the Installs tab. Then go to the install that we're actually using and hit the gear icon and then show an explorer. And what this does is opens up in an explorer window the location where Unity is installed on your computer. We then go into the data folder and the tools folder, and lo and behold, that is where Unity YAML merge is located. Now there's another file that's located here in this folder that's called merge spec file.txt. And we use this file to tell Unity YAML merge that it's going to be working together with the kdiff3 program that we just installed. Fortunately, I've already done this for you and provided it as part of the template project that I gave you at the beginning of term that you would have downloaded from GitHub Classroom. And so all we do is we go into source tree and find where that project is. Then we click on the Explorer button, and that shows us the project. And then those Unity YAML merge files are the config files that I've provided. And we want the Windows one, and there it is, merge spec file. So to put that onto your computer, we just need to copy it, then head over to that Tools folder where Unity is installed, and paste. And lo and behold, we now have the correct file that I provided you with. Now let's open that up for a moment. And we can see the key thing going on is this part here that in Unity, what we're telling Unity YAML Merge to do is that once it's done its computation of what the differences are between the scenes, is meant to use kdiff3 to actually show those differences. So that's where that's located. If you prefer to use a different merge tool, you're welcome to. You just have to make the appropriate changes in this file. So the next step is to configure source tree to be able to use Unity YAML merge. And to do this, we have to go into source tree's options. So tools, then options. And then head over to the diff tab. And the key bit is in these external diff and merge tools. And in both cases, we're going to put in the same thing. It's going to be Unity YAML merge in both cases. So exactly the same information. So the tool we set to being custom, and then the value that goes in there is the path that's to that Unity YAML merge tool. And we already figured that path out. Now, the easy way to get that path is to go over to the um, Explorer window that we had open, click on that little folder icon, and copy, and then we get the whole path there. So we don't have to be careful in typing it out. So we can paste that into that diff command part, 
And of course, be sure to include the unity yaml merge.exe after the path, because that's the thing we're actually calling. Now the arguments are the same again for both merge commands. So merge dash p dollar base dollar remote dollar local. And that's what goes into that field. And we do the same for both the external diff tool and the merge tool, exactly the same values. And that's it. That's all that's required to set up Unity YAML merge and KDIF3 to work with source tree. To test all of this out, we're going to modify a very simple Unity application on two computers, which we'll call Granite and Crocodile. It's easy to tell the difference between these two because one is going to be a Mac and the other is going to be a Windows computer. So first, let's open up the application. And here it is open on our Mac Granite. So we can see it's a, there's nothing much to this, it's just a box and a sphere. So let's go ahead and make a modification on this one and we'll take the box and we'll move it forward a little bit and maybe we'll change the scale a little bit so that it's a bit more uh, rectangular than box-like. Okay, so that's the, that's the modification we're gonna make on Granite. So let's save this. And we'll quit out of it just to keep ourselves clean. Now we're gonna flip over to our PC and we'll open up here. Of course, the change hasn't been made on this side because uh, it's a different computer. We didn't commit that change. We didn't pull it down. And so there's no reason why it would have been made. So what we're going to do is we're going to perform a different set of changes onto the box over here. So let's make the box a little bit higher. And I don't know, let's change it to still a box, um, but a bigger box. There we go. Okay, so we've got, ah, let's push it way over and make it look really different. Okay, there we go. All right, so we're gonna do the same deal here. We're going to save this. And we're gonna quit out. All right, so we've now got the problem that we've made two sets of changes on two different computers. Let's head back over to our Mac, Granite, and let's commit the changes here first. So we go through the usual business, we're gonna commit, we're gonna say, so Granette made the box into a big rectangle and we'll push these right on away back to the remote server. And there was no problem with doing this, of course, because Granette made the change first, made the commit first, and therefore is not aware of the changes that were made on Crocodile. Let's over, head over to Crocodile and um, we'll make a local commit first. And so Crocodile moved the box and made it bigger. And so we'll commit. And all is good there. Now, of course, the problem is that if we want to actually go ahead and push this, we're going to wind up conflicting with the change that was made um, from Granite. And so we're going to be defensive here and we're going to do the pull first. This will discover that the conflict was made because the version that is in the remote repository is going to have conflicting changes. So basically we made the box into the rectangle and here we tried to resize the box and move it and we can't do both of those things at once. So it informs us that we've got these merge conflicts. So let's go ahead and do the merge. We want to resolve conflicts and then launch the external merge tool, which will generate exactly what we're hoping for. It's found us the conflicts in terms of the position and scale. Now here, this one, the base, that was the original version. And these were the original coordinates of that cube and its original scale is a size three by three by three um, cube. The local one are the changes we made where we 
continue to make it a cube, but a bit bigger, and we change the location. And then the remote one were the changes that were made on the Mac, on Granette, where we made it into um, a rectangular-like thing by making it much bigger along the x-axis. And so here the idea is we have to choose which we want to go with. We can go with the original um, or either of the changes. We can't really merge these changes because they're just conflicting. But let's go ahead and go with the ones that are on the remote on C. So what we do is we go over to Merge Conflict, select lines from C, and we can go ahead and save, and then quit out. And that completes our merge. Now we can stage, commit, and note that the commit message is created for us. And then push back. And lo and behold, we're all done. And so here we can actually see what happened that the um, on Granette, we made the box into the big rectangle. And on Crocodile, we made the box uh, bigger and moved its location. And these are now parallel branches. And then the merge brought them back together. If we flip back to Granette, we'll find that we've got stuff to pull. And so we pull, and this will give us back the merged version that now um, brings together those two changes and brings us back to being consistent again. Just for fun, let's take a look at that. And we can see that the change is what we would have expected, that we got that big rectangle because that was the version that we accepted. So that's all done. Now, a kind of a word here is it's generally a good idea to try to avoid having to do these merges over a scene. In general, it's, it's going to work out better if you can agree among the team members who's going to be modifying a particular scene and, and allow that person to have the lock on that scene for that moment. Um, then you don't have to do the merging at all. Um, you can use your instant messenger client to decide who's going to be doing that and negotiate that way. But if you get into a situation where you have made multiple changes, then this approach is going to help out.